Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge. I want to talk a little bit today about writing a prologue in Clojure. Um, this will probably be a little longer of a first lesson today, but I want to go over the unification part of uh, a prologue engine. And we'll, we'll see here how prologue differs a little bit from uh, something like the MuCanron or MiniCanron uh, stuff that we did in the past in the other logic tutorials. Um, and, and we'll really kind of see how it differs in the way that prologue evaluates rules. So um, this is, first of all, not going to be a um, like a complete prologue by any specification. Um, it's also not going to necessarily follow the same syntax. We're going to adapt the syntax to, um, to closure. Um, but, but what I, we're going to look at is we're going to look at how prologue is basically a pattern matching engine. Um, it basically works by taking two environments and two um, terms in either environment and matching them or not matching them. So that's what the unification code is that we're going to look at today, is, is that um, bit of it known as, uh, you know, it's basically the pattern matcher. So to start with, we're going to create, um, we're going to get in the right namespace here first. Um, there we go. Um, and and the, you see the namespace here is called Savic. I, I'm working on kind of an embedded prologue enclosure, and I thought I'd go through the code um, here. Uh, so this code should be available at some point on GitHub. Um, as well. Okay, so so first of all, we're gonna we're gonna define this thing called LVAR, and and we won't use this in this tutorial, but it would allow us to create a logic variable. Um, so if we do LVAR test, it returns a simple test one four six four. And each time we do that, we get an, another variable. All right. Now now we have a predicate as well. So call it said is is this a logic variable, which just simply calls a symbol. So is one an LVAR? No, it's not. Is a an LVAR or no, a an LVAR? Yes, it is. Okay, um, and so that's what we're defining um, here in this in the system. And we have this thing called constant, and we should probably rename that because it's not truly a constant. It's um, we're defining a constant. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, no, this is this is fine. Uh, so the constant says if it's not an LVAR and not a seek, and we'll look at how we handle seeks in a little bit, then it's a constant. So if we put that in here. We'll see um, constant 42 is a constant, keyword foo is a constant, but a list of foo and 42 is not a constant. And we'll look, we'll look at the reason for that in a little bit. Okay, so the, the, the meat, the core of this whole thing, of this whole engine, is really this function called eval. And um, let's look at, at how we use eval, first of all. So eval really is, is a lot like you would expect eval to be in a list, uh, sorry, in a lisp, um, but it's simply going to go through and replace all the logic variables in the thing we hand it with um, uh, the things that are not logic variables, okay? So if we eval one in an empty environment, we get one, simple enough. And then if we eval um, A in an empty environment, we get nothing. So we can't evaluate that because A is a logic variable and it's not bound to anything. You can think of this as, as in a Lisp or in something like closures, you know, using the variable A with never having to find it in a let. It's an unbound variable. So we get nil back, which basically says, hey, evaluation failed, right? Now, if we eval A with A bound to 42, then we get 42 back. So that's where this environment comes in. It says, okay, so um, here is a thing that we want to evaluate. And then over here is, a, um, uh, is our environment where we can go and look up variables. Okay. So we hear that, see that here in the first bit. We say, um, if the source is a constant, then we return the source. If the source is an LVAR, then we attempt to get that LVAR out of the environment. If we succeed, we recur and eval again. So that would allow us to do something like this, right? A, we have A is B and B is 42. So A is looked up here and then we get the, the LVAR B and then B is looked up and we get 42, right? So we kind of, re, uh, we can have these chains of logic variables in our environment, right? Um, 
So that's why we have the recur there. But if we can't, if we don't find the logic variable, let's say for instance, if this was uh, C is B, then we return nil, like we expect, right? So now let's look at this bit here. Uh, this is for what we're gonna deal with um, in the next tutorials when we actually look at how we um, define rules and uh, recursive rules and all that sort of thing. But before we get to that, let's just specify that what in prologue, you would write something like this. Um, if you said, um, Bill is the father of, of Jim, you would do this. Right? Um, so this is the predicate, and these are the, you know, the arguments to the predicate. Right? And actually, since it, that, uh, yeah, that, that's the way it works. So we're going to redefine that to, in our version of prologue to something like this. So we're gonna use keywords for constants instead of syntactic information. And then we're gonna say, if there's a seek, the first thing in the seek is the predicate, is the name of the, the term, if you will. So when we do pattern matching, um, we don't really, or in this evaluation, when we do this evaluation, we wanna make sure that we don't evaluate the first thing. And we don't wanna do that because um, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to, I mean, I haven't explored this. It may be possible to have, you know, um, a logic variable A, and I don't even know what that would be. It, it, would, it would get really weird really fast. So we'll see if that makes any sense in the future, but my, my, uh, we'll, we'll stick with this for now because this would be equivalent to doing something like this um, um, in Prolog, where the, the name of your rule is a logic variable. We might be able to do something like that, we'll see. So anyway, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off heads, the head off of the source, right? So if it's not a constant, it's not an LVAR, it has to be a seek, in which case we're gonna get the head and the rest of the arcs. And we're gonna assert that the symbol, the head is a symbol. And we're gonna complain that predicate names must be symbols, okay? So then what we're gonna do is simply reduce through all the arguments, building up a vector of all of them um, and then when we're done, we're going to cons onto it, that cons the head back onto it. All right. So let, let's look at how that works. Eval and um, so the father, Bill, and Jim on an empty environment. Uh, okay, and that did not, uh, in fact, work the way we expected. Let's see here. Um, Yeah, because I actually think that this is not, um, I think we actually have a, a, a failure in our, in our code here. Because um, we actually want to conj ac, um, yeah, yeah, we're missing a, um, so if there's an LVAR, if V is an LVAR, then we do this. Otherwise, we just simply conj onto the accumulator V. There we go. Let's try that now. So now if we go back to our last example, uh, that that's, still doesn't work. Oh, because it's an LVAR, that's okay. So there we go. Father is Jim. And actually, I had that correct before. Okay, so... The, the problem was in my example. So here, here's, here's what we're doing. Let's try this again, and then we'll do this in there. Okay, it does work. So, so the problem was the, that I was doing this um, where Jim is a, um, a logic variable and Jim was not bound to anything. Now, if we had bound Jim to 42, we would see we'd get father 42 here. So now if we, um, we have multiple arguments, and it evaluates as we expect. So, so all we're really doing here with a seek um, in this eval is we're ignoring the head, and then we're going through and finding all the logic variables in the arguments to this um, predicate, and uh, substituting any logic variables with, um, uh, with the bound variables. Now, we can actually nest these. Um, so we could say the father of 
Bill is the son of Jim, or, or you know, let's say Ted, okay. Um, and if we do that, we don't need an environment anymore. Um, and that just evaluates to what we'd expect. So now if we, we, we can substitute Ted with T and then say um, T is Ted, and there we go, right? So we're basically recursively going through this entire um, structure and uh, evaluating it, replacing any logic variables that we can with actual data. Okay, so that's eval. So how does that help us? Well, now we have this wonderful function here called unify. Now unify takes four arguments, and let's look at the basic usage. Unify takes a source term and a destination term, as I'm calling it, um, and it also takes a source environment and a destination environment. So our source in this case, let's try one, and our source environment is going to be empty, and then our destination environment, our destination is going to be one, and our destination environment is going to be empty. So if we do this, we get back an empty map, which is different than if we got nil. So what we're doing here is we're saying, given a source and a source environment and giving a destination, update this destination environment to include new information that we've inferred about the destination from the source. Okay, so let's, let's look at this. If we say one, and then we say A here. So what we're saying is unify one in an empty environment with A with an empty environment, updating that, that destination environment. What we get back is A1. So we can see here we've compared, we said A should unify to one. A is unbound here in this, in this destination environment. Therefore, A must be one. Now, because we're evaluating both the source and the destination during the uh, call to unify, if here in this um, destination environment, if we say A is 42, we in fact get back false or nil. I mean, I could update this to always return nil, but this works, right? So what we said is, is unify A with one, but over here we've also stated that A is 42, and 42 does not equal one, therefore um, the unification fails. Now, likewise, if I say B here and B is 42, this will pass and we get back the original environment uh, that we put in. So here we said unify A with B where B is 42 and A is 42 and that works. And just for completeness sake, uh, we can do other things such as um, find a uh, unify in an empty environment like so and that works. Uh, one last thing is that this, before we walk through this code, this will work with, um, with our seeks as well. So we can say Bill is a father, right? And then we say, what is A? Well, A is saying that Bill is a father. Okay. And we can also do something like this, father, A, A. Uh, so what we're saying here is saying um, unify a with father a, with the predicate father a here, right? So what we're saying is, is this is a logic variable. We, we don't know what this is. We'd like to know what this is, but unify it against b, and b is unified to this logic variable, and inside that we find this predicate which says that um, father is Bill, and we run this, and uh, we get bad data. That's that's unique. Uh, we'll have to debug that in a second. Um, all right, well, let's let's walk through this code and, and maybe this will um, the the problem here will become more apparent. Um, I, I've I've been iterating over this code several times, and so um, there's bound to be a few bugs here and there. Okay, so let's take a look at this. All right, so what we have is we have a source and a source environment and a destination and destination environment. If the source and the destination are both constants, then what we need to do is unify the source, uh, then we need to assert that the source and the destination are equal, and if so, return the destination environment. So that was the first test we did, right? They're both constants, we return the destination environment, okay? Now, now if the source is an LVAR, like this, right? If the source is an LVAR, 
Then we try to eval the source in the source environment. So what we did is we looked up A in uh, this source environment. And when we get it back, we recur back into unify and unify again. So what this call does is if we call this, it basically goes up and calls unify again with something like this. And then that fails, they're both constants, boom, and it, it dies out, okay? Um, if, uh, so, so if, if, it's, uh, if it's found, we recur. Otherwise, if it's not, then we just return the destination environment. Now, now what does that mean? Well, what we're saying is, um, yeah, let's uh, quote A here. So what we're saying is, is that the source environment, and this is this is why I call these source and um, and uh, destination. What we're really kind of doing is, if you look at this arrow, we're pulling information from the left side and applying it into the right side, a right two arguments. So, but we're not going the other way. And that's, that's kind of critical. So what we're doing here is we're saying unify A with one, and then find out more information about this second environment from that analysis. Well, there's nothing we can, more that we can figure out. A is one, now we could go up here and update the source, but we're not interested in that. We're only flowing information one way. And so because of that, all we really can do is say, yeah, that works, okay? A can be anything. You said A is now one, okay, that's fine. Now we're not gonna remember that you said A is one because we're flowing information one way, but there we go. Now, going the other way, which is this next part, if the destination is an LVAR, well then we need to go back um, and look at this a different way. So if the destination is, an, is a logic variable, um, then what we're going to do is we're going to resolve it. And if it resolves, we're going to recur. Uh, we're gonna resolve the destination. And if the destination is, um, uh, yes, so it, we're gonna resolve it. And if it, if it resolves, we're going to recur. So, so uh, you know what, Let, let's do this. Let's enable this debug here because that'll, that'll show us our unifications. So when, when we say unify here, um, let's see, let's, let's reorganize these args so that they're in the same order as, um, and let's give ourselves a little arrow so we know what's going on. There we go. All right, so when we look at this then, we can see that one, uh, we're unifying one with hash map with A. And the result is A is now one. Now, if here, we said a, a is, uh, for instance, 42, we would see two unifications. So the unification is the left side is one and the right side is a is 42. So we pulled a out of this environment, which is here. And then we have a unification of one and 42, which fails with a false and that's up here. All right. Okay, so now let's go to look at um, um, how are uh, predicates eval? So, so it's interesting that if we just say something like this, if we say unify father bill, um, then all it really is is, well, the destination is a logic variable, so we go here, right? This, the rest of this code here is only really ever hit when we have a uh, predicate on both sides. So, father, bill. So when we run this, we see the unification here. So the first thing we do is we have to check to make sure that the, the names of both these predicates are the same. Father and father are the same here, right? or the names, the predicates in both of these terms. I'm, I'm mixing up my terms here. Uh, but this is technically the predicate, I believe. And uh, these, this thing entirely here is the term. So these match. Um, they're both father and father, so that unifies. Next thing we're going to do is check that the count is the same. Well, they both have two things, right? Okay, so that succeeds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through those one at a time. And we're going to say, 
Uh, we're going to start with the destination environment and go through the args and make sure all the args match. And so uh, we do that. Uh, let's see here. And this really, this is what we had a problem with before. Okay, that does work. I must have uh, misquoted something uh, earlier. Uh, all right. So, so when we do, when we have something like this that says unify father Bill with father A, where A is a logic variable, then here's what happens. We unify just like the, these two terms. But then that, when we get into this type here, part of the code here, we start to step through every argument in both the source and the destination. And then we just run unify on both. So as, as long as we continue to have arguments, get the current argument, and then do a unify of the source argument and the destination argument in the destination environment, and if that unifies, then recur with a new environment. And that's our new destination environment that we use throughout this, the course of this entire loop. Right. So what this means is that we can even do stuff like this. Okay, so that didn't unify. But this would. And what we say here is we say unify this term with father AA. And because we're using the same logic variable, and this environment is used recursively throughout the, uh, the use of this loop. Each time we loop, we add more and more information, and we don't, don't forget the information we've built up so far. Because we continue to thread that environment through this loop, we can say A is Bill, right? So first of all here, we're saying Bill, unify Bill with A, boom. So then in the next unification, we say unify Bill with A, and we already know that over here A should be Bill. So then what we do is we once we eval, we say, does Bill unify with Bill? Yes, in fact, it does. And so therefore, the result is A and Bill. So we can already start to do some stuff like constraints to say that the first two arguments of these things must be the same. Right? Um, and uh, we, can, we can do other stuff here as well. So we can say A is Bill. And so in that way, if we put Fred in both of these, we'll see that this never actually unifies. Because even though Fred is equal to Fred, we have bound A to be Bill, and therefore these two terms do not unify. So that's the basics. That's the core, this is the, the core guts of a prolog engine, is this sort of thing that can take these terms and just really pattern matching. All we're really doing is, is walking a tree, if you will, of terms and, um, and gathering information. And, and with the simple code that we already have, we can start to do some pretty interesting stuff um, like this. So we can nest these terms now. Or we can uh, do something, for instance, here like x, and we can, you know, pattern match and pull out um, something fairly deep in the structure here. So here we've nested two terms inside each other: father, son. The son is Fred, and we can pull that out with a form of almost like destructuring, if you will. All right, so that's the first part of our prolog engine. Next time we're going to deal with uh, creating rules and inserting data into a database. Um, and uh, then in the tutorial after that, we'll probably go into lists, how we implement lists in a prolog engine like this, as well as some basic functions like member and um, you know, at appending to a list and removing from a list. And, and we'll just continue to build this up uh, over time. That's the tutorial for today. Uh, thank you for watching.